Hello everyone and welcome to another TGN World of Warcraft guide with your host today, Rurikon. So today we're going to be tanking the Shadowfang Keep Heroic. And this was this is actually kind of awkward because just yesterday I believe um I mean, not yesterday, but um, the video before the, this video that you're watching now uh, is probably going to be a video of me healing through Shadow Fang Keep. So what happened is basically that particular video is actually a lot older than this one. And today when I was doing my random, I usually always record my random heroics in case they come out something that I feel that it's worth publishing. I will always do commentary on it. So basically today... Uh, I actually got a pretty good random heroic on my paladin, and I just thought, man, I have to put this video out because it's just, I, ju I just really enjoyed this this heroic run. Uh, so, I'm not sure if you guys noticed or not. This is actually a complete random pug. It's not a guild group, even though it will most likely look like it. It will most likely look like a guild group. It's actually not, and. The justification for that is that um, if you guys look at each of the names of these players on the screen, you will notice that each of them has an asterisk next to it. What that means is that they're from a different realm than me. In case you guys are not sure about that, you can Google about it and I can assure you, these guys are not from my guild. I've never met them before. So basically what happened is uh, I began doing a little AoE polling, which is usually what you should be doing in Shadowfang Keep because the mobs don't really hit that hard that the that the, your healer can't heal uh, what might happen is that you might need a, a bit more mana breaks but the problem with uh, this instance is that there's very short room in it now and here there's also a little something that kind of ticked me off a bit which is the paladin the retribution paladin pulled before i was even there because um i noticed earlier that uh, the mage was trying to cast the table for refreshments and I didn't actually let him cast it, and so I was giving him time by going back and looting some stuff. Uh, but instead of doing that, the Retribution Paladin went ahead and pulled, and I'm the forgiving type. I will forgive that. I will not let people die for that. Uh, I know that a lot of tanks are actually like, oh, you pulled it ahead of me, and now I'm going to let you die. But I'm not like that. I like to do things... Um, Almost, you could almost say professionally. I like to almost tank at a professional level. Um, because, basically, if someone else pulled it and I don't have aggro, I see it as a challenge. You know what I mean? Instead of looking at it like a bad thing, I try to look at it like a good thing. Which is like, okay, so this guy pulled. What can I do to get aggro back? I can use uh, Consecration, my uh, righteous, uh, defend, righteous Defense, the thing that taunts three targets. I can't remember the proper name right now. My Hand of Reckoning my uh, hammer of the righteous all that stuff and I try to basically do everything I can to get aggro back and it's like a challenge instead of seeing it like a bad thing so anyways uh, I began tanking this uh, in AoE which is like I said what I usually do in this instance because there's tons of trash in this instance and in fact I've always AoE tanked this instance even when I didn't have all that much gear uh, you can basically use uh, a glyph for the paladin which is a um, a uh, glyph of... Ah, oh, I lost my turn of thought. It's the glyph of seal of the righteous. Now, over there, what I was doing is was I was inspecting this um, retribution paladin on my group to see if he has rebuke. Because I always like to go through tactics. And you guys probably already know the tactic about this boss because you will most likely have already seen my healing video. But in case you didn't, I'm going to go over it again. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. But it's just that I find it necessary to completely detail the videos. This boss basically will do something which is... Uh, uh, it's a shadow channeled spell, Pain and Suffering, that, that can be dispelled by the healer, so you don't have to worry about that. And then he will also make um, something else, which is the Stay of Execution, that has to be interrupted. And then he also makes something else, which is Mend Rotting Flesh. Now, Stay of Execution, uh, can actually you can actually leave it tick for once or twice, because it's basically an AoE Holy Nova that heals your entire party. And it's actually necessary, because at the time he does it, uh, your party will most likely be at one hit point. So you will, you might want to let that pass uh, for one tick or twice, and then it has to be interrupted. Now, Paladins, Protection Paladins, still don't have Rebuke. So in this particular case, I'm asking the Paladin to interrupt the Holy Nova when it comes after it's ticked once or twice. 
which he does. It ticked once and the paladin interrupted it. And then I asked the shaman that's with us to make sure to interrupt men rotting flesh. So that way I have all the abilities covered that are really, really important. Uh, I usually tell my DPSers to save their cooldowns for the Dark Angel form, but since this group seemed quite experienced from their damage and all that stuff, I basically didn't even say anything because I assumed they already knew it. Which sometimes might come back to kick you in the ass, but in this particular case it didn't. Um, the group was actually pretty, pretty good. In fact, the group was excellent. I shouldn't be saying they were good. They were excellent. I mean, you have a Shaman there pushing 15k, you have a Mage pushing 13k and you have a retribution paladin pushing 12k that's about as good as it's gonna get and your healer is not running out of mana so yeah so this phase that you're watching right now in the boss is actually a burn phase he's going to be making mass aoe damage on your raid but since we actually killed it pretty fast with the huge dps these guys are pulling off uh it was actually quite simple um so that actually made this boss quite simple. In case you want to do the achievement for this boss, it's actually a pain in the ass, but the achievement for this boss is to not let him heal once with stay of execution. So it has to be interrupted before any ticks come in. Um, now this particular part of the instance kind of annoys me. I almost wish that we could be the ones to open the door because as you can see, this group is actually pretty fast. And since we're being that fast, I'm ac I've actually gotten in this mode uh, where I was like, okay, let, let me try and do this as fast as possible, and you could almost call it a speed run. Uh, even though I didn't exactly went into this mode at the point you're watching in this video, it was a bit further ahead, because otherwise I would have pulled slightly differently uh, downstairs. But um, the way you want to pull uh, these next packs to do it the safest way possible is you want to go ahead and pull them one at a time, uh, one each of the big ones, and pull them inside. Why? Because these big ones make fear, and fear can basically cause all of your party members to run away and aggro more mobs. So if you want to do it the safest way possible, uh, you pull the big ones inside, kill them inside. As you can see, we get, a, we get a fear there, and I'm running back in again. But yeah, you pull them inside, and it basically makes, makes this trash a whole lot easier. If you fight on the outside, it's going to be a pain in your ass, because people are going to get feared, they're going to aggro multiple mobs, and in some tanks case, in case they're um, really good geared and stuff like that, it might actually be a good thing. They'll clear the area a whole lot faster. But in the case of my Paladin, he's actually only got some heroic gear. Uh, so he's not super duper geared and I really don't want to risk wiping because this group is actually performing so damn well that I want to have the best chance of success for this. In fact, the Reaver, nice enough uh, not to moan at me for something that I'm going to be doing further ahead in the video, and I will explain when that, di when that time comes. Uh, now here, as you can see, uh, you get the full effect of the Glyph of Holy Wrath, which in my opinion is an awesome tool, because it's one of, th one of the best types of um, avoidance possible is to not take damage, in my opinion. And since this instance is basically packed with undead, each time that you use Holy Wrath, what you're going to get is you're going to get an AoE stun. And AoE stun means that nothing is hitting you. And if nothing is hitting you, you're basically avoiding all the damage. So that's the be best possible way to avoid damage. Now here, as you can see, they've aggroed an haunted servitor. And I didn't taunt it right away because I was expecting for the cooldown on my Avenger shield so that I could pick him up at a distance and make him come to me instead of me tanking all the way over where he is, which in case this mob then made a terrifying roar, I would most likely aggro the mob that's on the far end of this um, courtyard which you don't want to do. You want to kill one... In this courtyard, we want to kill one at a time, because you can. Further ahead, you will have to tank them in AoE, and it's it's going to be a lot harder for you here. But here, since you can take your time, you should you should do so. Unless you're really comfortable in tanking, you can actually take two at a time, or whatever. It's all up to whoever's doing the tanking. Now, um, as you can see, we cleared uh, most of the courtyard, and coming up ahead, I'm going to try and keep trying to AoE, and basically at that point is when I'm t I basically figured out that I could just chain pull non-stop and you will see a, a dramatically change in the way that I'm tanking stuff which is you will see me run to packs before my pack is killed you will see me pull mobs from other packs basically you will see me doing what uh, we tanks usually call a speed run which is something that I only used to make in um, Wrath of the Lich King because I couldn't really do it in TBC I mean 
at certain points I could. Like you can see here, I'm not even moving the mob away. I'm just going to taunt the haunted servitor and pull him on top. And the DPSers can just keep on killing the mindless horror while still, sp while still spreading some AoE onto the new mob that I pull. This is what you call chain pulling. Pulling before the other mob is actually dead, or the other pack is actually dead. Um, so, <coughs> Whew. that was a really fast commentary there. I almost <laughs> lost my spot there. So, um, as you can see here at this door, I'm just going to go ahead and Avenger Shield and do what we call an LOS pull. Actually, I wanted to do Avenger Shield, but it was on cooldown, so I went downstairs and just packed Holy Wrath. And then I get these guys, and I'm like, awesome, just come on top of my consecration and I'll just take you all on now in case you're wondering why you see green bars and red bars that's actually an add-on and in the future I'm going to be writing uh, writing I'm going to be making a video with it with a UI guide so that you guys can get a UI that looks just like mine uh, and it will most likely if you're watching this at a later date it will most likely be in some form of annotation here or here or whatever and you can just click on it and go watch uh, the video about my user interface and about macros and all stuff like that I'm going to be making videos for that as well for you guys to see it's just that right now I'm producing um, more content guides for heroics and then I'll get into the nitty-gritty of stuff like specs and stuff like that so um, now getting right back on the video as you can see in the in these rooms if you have problems um, grabbing AOE aggro because I know that not all tanks have something like consecration and holy wrath and the ton of AOE abilities. What you can actually do is you can pull back to the door where I came in from. Like you can just do a taunt on a mob and then pull them back to the door and you'll get them tightly packed which should allow you to get some form of your AOE abilities because even though not all tanks might have some super duper AOE abilities like the Palvin, they still have some quite acceptable abilities like let's say the warriors with rend and thunderclap the druids I believe have some form of swipe it really pains me at this moment because the druid is actually the only class that I really don't have solid knowledge of but I'm I'm gonna be fixing that really really soon uh, your death your death knights have the blood boil and um, earth strike now also hits three targets so basically all the classes have some form of AoE which you gotta do sometimes is to make sure that you get them tightly packed which is what I did here as you could see I did Avenger shield so that the mobs would aggro onto me and then I stepped away from the door what that does is basically it breaks line of sight for the mobs and forces the mobs to come out from where they were and come all the way out to me and why is this important because most of these mobs are caster mobs. If you just taunt them, they'll just sit there and throw spells at you. And you don't want that. You want to be hitting them. Otherwise, you will lose aggro, which is actually the case here. Each time you see a red bar, it means I'm not doing my job properly. And that's, I know it's a pain in the ass, but these guys are way more geared than me. So that's not really something I can do anything about but basically red bars mean I don't have aggro green bars mean I have solid aggro yellow bars mean I'm about to lose aggro okay this is just so that you guys can actually judge my tanking more effectively than just looking at the screen and saying yeah he's tanking pretty good if you see a whole bunch of red bars no I'm not okay so just keep that in mind now for the next boss that we're going to be fighting, as you can see, we're basically chain pulling everything, not stopping for anything. And as you can see, the healer is not running out of mana, which means to me that he's either epic geared or playing his class to the, his fullest extent and he's like a god of priests because a normal priest here will run oom if I pull the way I'm pulling. So I'm pretty sure that he's either an awesome healer or he's epic geared. I didn't actually got to um, inspect him. And as you can see, I'm not even breaking for mana. I'm just like, keep on pulling. And since nobody's saying anything, I'm assuming this is actually what they want. Because as you know, everybody wants to get through the instance as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. And as a tank, the, eff the most efficient possible way to do this is keep on pulling. Keep on As long as your healer has the resources and your DPS aren't struggling all that much for their own resources, just keep on pulling, keep on going, and people will adapt. Trust me, it works really well. Now, for this particular boss, the only thing that the DPS really has to do is nuke the ads 
they only have to nuke the adds. In this case, they're not even nuking the adds because they're just making so much damage. I mean, the Paladin at this point is making 18,000 damage per second. That's just ridiculous. That, that That's higher than the, than the values I usually see in raids. I mean, it's completely freaking insane. 18,000 damage with a Paladin. Seriously. So, basically, what's happening right now is that um, we are... Um, we're taking the ads, but they're really f pushing the, um, the boss because they can basically nuke down the boss before nuking out all the ads. Uh, and that is basically um, that's basically the most efficient way then. If you can actually just nuke the boss down really fast and you only have like one small set of ads, you will do just fine. Uh, sorry, getting a message here. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and now, right back on to the... Um, to the instance uh, what we got what we're going to do now is I'm going to be pulling the next packs just keep on chain pulling as you can see no mana breaks I believe that the um, I believe that the mage is drinking at the moment but that's fine he can drink downstairs and you can keep on pulling upstairs this if you're doing um, if you're doing a speed run this is what you want to do and since that was what I was trying to do at that point in time that's basically what I did. I came upstairs and started pulling, and the DPSers that have resources follow you, and the healer, which obviously still has mana, like I said, this guy was playing priest like if he was a freaking god. Um, you can just keep on going. Uh, now, melee DPS never run out of mana, which is the case of Retribution Paladins and Shamans. If played right, they never run out of mana. Now, something else that you might notice is that um, in previous videos that you've seen from me tanking with my Paladin, what you're going to be seeing is that most of the times I'm using my holy power in Word of Glory. In case you don't know what holy power is, it's basically like this. Uh, Blizzard gave Paladins a whole new set of resources, right? And that set of resources is called holy power. Uh, in this case, it's represented by the pink bars below my mana bar, which is to the left of my character, in case you're not seeing. There's a small pink bar there with a blue bar underneath, which is my mana. So the pink bar on top is my health. The blue bar underneath is my mana, and the three things that you see below are going to be charges of holy power that are being generated. How do paladins generate holy power? Well, protection paladins in specific generate holy power by using Crusader Strike and Hammer of the Righteous. Retribution paladins generate holy power by using Crusader Strike, and I believe there's one more ability for them that generates holy power. Um, holy paladins can generate holy power through Crusader Strike and Holy Shock. So just to let you know, and what Crusader power, uh, what Crusader, Crusader power, <laughs> Crusader power, yeah, we're going at Crusader power, dudes, yeah, awesome, no, what Holy Power allows you to do is basically gives you access to three different skills, one of them is Word of Glory, which is a self-heal, and obviously this will heal more according to the charges of Holy Power that you have available, if you use Word of Glory with one Holy Power, it's going to give you a short heal. If you use it with two holy powers, it's going to give you a medium heal. If you use it with three holy powers, it's going to give you a really big heal. So you got Word of Glory, and then you have Inquisition. Inquisition increases your holy power by your holy damage by 30%. And why am I mentioning this? Because during this run, you're going to see me use Inquisition a lot of times. Because, like I said, it's a speed run, and what Inquisition allows me to do is to make more damage. Because increasing um, my holy damage means that I make more damage with Crusader Strike, which I still believe that is holy damage. Judgment, which is also holy damage. Uh, Hammer of the Righteous, which is also holy damage. Now let me just pause the holy power explanation here for the boss. So this boss is actually Commander Springvale and they wanted to skip this boss. However, uh, I, in a way sometimes it pisses me off that people want to skip this boss when I come here as a healer because it's a challenging boss for a healer to do and it kind of ticks me off. But at this point I actually just wanted to make the boss because I wanted to show everyone in this video. So basically I kind of forced them into doing the boss because without me they can't do it so basically I kind of forced them to do the boss and I'm and I'm sorry for that but I needed the boss to make this video so the tactic that I'm going to be using is actually the same tactic that people use to make the achievement for this boss and in my opinion it's the most efficient way to ki kill this boss why because this boss basically what it does is from time to time he spawns two ads right and what you want to do is um, at the start of this, at the start of the boss, you want to leave your DPS in that room and have them kill one of the ads, right? 
So they kill one of the ads off, and you grab the boss and bring him all the way back to the courtyard. And as they're running back, they'll, they will eventually pick up with the other ad and kill the other ad as well. And if you have CC, it helps immensely. Like, say, you can trap one of the ads and he will never come all the way to the courtyard. You, and you can kill off the other one. If you have two hunters, you can trap both of them and just run to the courtyard and none of the mobs will come. And why is this um, a really good tactic? Because basically, the mobs won't spawn anymore. If you bring the boss all the way to the courtyards, the mobs will spawn in the boss room but that won't really matter to you because you'll be fighting in the courtyard. So I'm not exactly sure if Blizzard classi classifies this as an exploit. I would classify it as a clever use of game mechanics, which is what they usually say. But anyways, the whole deal about doing it like this is that basically the boss will never get Unholy Empowerment, which is also an achievement to, to do this boss without him getting Holy Empowerment. Now, everyone in this group already had this achievement, but it's still the most em efficient way to kill this boss. Now, at this point, I'm going to ask them uh, to apologize to them and telling them that I'm actually making a video and I need all the bosses uh, in, the, in the instance to make the, the video complete. I mean, wouldn't it just suck if I would go through there and say, Oh, there's Commander Skipvale. Uh, Skip... <laughs> Commander <laughs> Skip Veil. Vale. Yeah, people skip this freaking boss so many times. I'm gonna call him Commander Skip Veil. Vale. No, his name is actually Commander S Spring Veil, vale, and um, people skip him so many times that it kind of ticks me off, and I don't like skipping bosses. I really don't. I mean, I feel that when you do a dungeon, it's an experience you're doing, right? You're having your engaged in an experience. You can almost call it a mini adventure between you and four other people, and. I like to do it, I like to complete it. I always like to go out of my way to complete stuff, even if it's not necessary. Unless I happen to be in a hurry for a raid or something, at which point, well, I usually try to get things done faster, but normally I will always try to kill all the bosses. And now they're asking me about, oh, where's this video going to be going up and whatever, and I'm just telling them it's going to be going up at TGN World of Warcraft, which is currently the best source in the web for World of Warcraft videos. So, yeah, I know, I'm not being modest at all. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, as you can see, chain pulling right after the boss. Uh, going right back onto this trash. I'm basically AoE tanking. And in AoE tanking with a Paladin, what you want to do is probably just pop your Avenger shield right at start. And then start spamming your Hammer of the Righteous, your Crusader Strike, your Holy Wrath. All that kinds of good stuff on top of the mobs. And we'll basically... Usually you will get solid threat, but in this particular case, I'm, I have to admit I'm struggling a bit to keep up with these guys. Like I said, they're making a ton of damage, and it's also a challenge. Again, each time that you see something in this game that's difficult for you to do, instead of looking at it like a bad thing, like, oh my god, I gotta suffer through this thing all over again. I don't believe this. Why do people have to make so much damage? No, you have to look at it as a good thing, which is basically, man, if I can keep mobs onto me while these guys are just basically tearing them up, man, I must be a really awesome tank. Basically, that's the way, that's the way that you gotta look at things, you know? Basically, what you gotta do is you gotta say, well, here's a challenge, you know? And I know that I'm gonna get flamed for that misclick. I just know. Yeah, I misclicked and I used Divine Shield. Whoops. Sorry, I make mistakes as well. Um, but like I was saying, you got to look at this kind of stuff as a challenge instead of something bad. So basically, if they're making a crap ton of damage and I'm having a hard time keeping aggro, that's the way I like it. I like having a hard time. That's probably why I play Warrior for so long. Yeah. What are you? A glutton for punishment? Yeah, maybe. Uh, and I know that's completely overused, but yeah, sorry. Uh, it just had to be said. Like you see there, they just completely start blowing stuff up and I'm just like holy crap red bars all over the place I gotta do something about this so I try to stun them with holy wrath and then I, I try to use my shield and all all the abilities that I have available to me just to try and keep stuff on me so that they don't take damage so that this goes smooth as possible and basically the result that you're gonna get if you look at everything that happens in the game as a challenge instead of just giving up and calling it wipe or whatever basically what's gonna, what's gonna happen is you're going to develop 
stronger skill. You're going to become better at the game by overcoming challenges like this. Like right now, as you can see in that pull, I had almost no aggro, but still, it's not like I'm panicking, I'm just basically trying to move around, position the mobs, which you always want to do as a tank also is something that I still haven't mentioned, but I think it goes without saying, is you want to keep the tanks in, let's say, uh, 120 degrees in front of you. Why? Because if they go to your sides or behind you, what's going to happen is they're going to be skipping your dodge and your parry, and they're just going to be hitting you straight to the face. The only thing that will be affecting them is their chance to miss, which I believe at this point is 6%. Once you get the crit immune talent, they have 6% chance to miss you. But, um, yeah, you want to keep the mobs in front of you, and you want to look at this as a challenge. Now, uh, before we engage the um, Commander Skipvale, <laughs> before we engage Commander Skipvale, um, I was actually speaking about Holy Power, and I want to get back to that. So, Holy Power allows you to do three different skills. I've already mentioned the first, Word of Glory, which will change dynamically according to the number of um, Holy Power you have when you cast the skill. Again, just take quick notice that I'm pulling before the other mob is dead. Okay? That's what you call chain pulling and speed run and stuff like that. Now, you gotta also make sure that you help your healer. Like, I'm not just pulling all this stuff and not paying attention to what's happening. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I popped the cooldown down. Tw uh, cooldown there. 20% less damage intake. Why? Because there was basically a whole bunch of mobs. And, and as you can see, even the healer thought, Whoa, he's taking way too much damage. So even the healer popped the cooldown on me, which this, this particular cooldown, I believe, brings you back from the dead and stuff like that. Yeah, if you die during that cooldown, you come back to living. And while you have those wings on the from the priest on you, you receive additional healing. At least that's what it did in Wrath of the Lich King. I haven't really kept myself updated with priest skills, but I'm pretty sure it's something like that it still does now. So, again, back on Holy Power. Uh, you can either do the Word of Glory, which will increase dynamically according to the, um, num the number of stacks of Holy Power you have on your Paladin, or you can do Inquisition, which will increase your Holy, your holy Damage by 30%, and the, the thing that changes to the number of Holy Powers in this skill is basically that the more Holy Power you have, the longer the, the buff will stay in effect, which is 4 seconds per each charge of Holy Power. So basically, a full charged up bar of Holy Power with 3 Holy Powers, uh, you pop Inquisition, and what you're going to get is 12 seconds of 30% increased Holy Damage. And I'm using that quite a lot in this instance. A lot more than I would usually do, because, like I said, this healer is just completely overpowered, and the DPS is making a ton of damage, and I have to do something to cope with it, and in this case, it's Inquisition. Uh, the other skill that you have is the Shield of the Righteous, which is also called the Paladin Shield Slam. And this was a skill that I actually tried even struggling with blizzards and forums not to implement because I just I just thought that the shield slam was something so unique to the warrior class that it really it really basically kind of frustrated me when the paladins got it as well but whatever uh, so shield of the righteous what it does it's it's a heavy hitting attack that's going to make the more damage uh, the more holy power charges you got so yeah. And that is usually what you want to use on bosses if you're having threat issues, because it will give you a whole bunch of threat. Now, as you can see, I've engaged another boss, and I'm trying to get people to call this boss the Stoplight Boss. Why? I can tell you every single strategy you need to know for this boss by simply saying three sentences. And that kind of, to me, makes him a Stoplight Boss. So basically what you got to do is move when you see green, like strafe left and right or jump stuff like that forward and backward so move when you see green stop when you see red unless you're not in contact with the boss in your melee if you're a melee you can move a bit during red just to kill him but basically the whole idea is stand still as much as possible during red and dodge the blue now the dodge the blue i know it doesn't really make much sense to a uh, stoplight but still it's still a stoplight boss right move when it's green stop when it's red and dodge when it's blue yeah, pretty simple boss. And that's all you gotta do for this boss. There's really nothing else you gotta do. It's basically move when it's green, stop when it's red, dodge when it's blue. Pretty simple stuff. As you can see, red mix, do not move. I mean, if you have deadly boss mods, I mean, basically it tells you everything you really need to know during an heroic. Or at least most of the stuff. Some stuff you have to know by yourself. But yeah, this particular boss is not really challenging. So... <sighs> we've went through holy power, we've went through this, um, the concept of speed running, and 
tons of other stuff and I know that probably by now you guys want to uh, also know about the spec of my paladin and all that kinds of stuff that's also going to be made in future videos um, for now I just really wanted to get through this uh, shadow fan keep here uh, again with these freaking doors this kind of annoys me I wish that blizzard would make us I don't know some way to just let us open the door because look at what we're doing here I'm running like a headless chicken against a gate that's closed and it's not going to be opening just because I'm running against it. It's actually only going to open up when this slow ass worgen comes in here and opens the door for me. I mean, I thought worgens were supposed to be smart. Don't they have like that dark fly Rachel that when they dark fly, <laughs> dark fly Rachel, dark flight Rachel that when they transform from humans into worgens they go super fast or something give these worgens that ability make them go from human to worgen and super feast and super feast super fast and open up the doors for us please because i'm pretty sure that a lot of uh, players are actually getting really tired of waiting for these doors to open and it's not just me and it's not just the first time it's happened to me too it's happened to me on worse pugs even pugs that have to stop after bosses they still stop get their full mana back up and we still have to be waiting for them for the damn NPC to open the door. Now these particular mobs, if you're not comfortable uh, with tanking, you really want to CC them because these mobs, they they pack quite a punch. And I know that you can't really tell because like I said, this healer is really, really good. And you can't really tell um, that I'm taking that much damage, but trust me, the damage from these mobs, it's just huge. In fact, in here I made a huge mistake in my opinion, which is I should have popped the cooldown. And as you can see, I did pop a cooldown but in my opinion I should have popped it earlier and then I also popped Holy Radiance to get some um, to get some life back up as well just to help out the healer a bit even though he doesn't really need it but since Paladins can do it why not do it I mean yeah it's basically you want to do as much as you can for your group it, because it's all a group effort and you just want to get through the instance as fast as possible uh, so once again this is going to be the uh, last pack before the um, the last boss's room. In the last boss's room there's just two adds and then there's the boss. And that boss is actually uh, pretty simple. The achievement however is not so simple. In fact I've tried doing that achievement with my war and I still wasn't able to do it. Uh, with a paladin it's pretty easy. In fact I can guide you to do the, the achievement if you if you want to do it with a paladin. Um, <coughs> so basically what is the next boss about? The next boss is actually something uh, I actually kind of enjoy the next boss. His name is Lord jo Godfrey. And Lord Godfrey seems to be almost like an undead werewolf hunter because he has this whole pistols thing going for him. And I'm not sure if you uh, know all that much lore about werewolves, but usually werewolves, either werewolves or vampires. I don't know. I always mix those two together. Uh, I'm not a big fan of werewolves or vampires or whatever. But uh, basically, usually in the werewolf stories and films about werewolves you usually have this silver element and usually someone with a pistol with silver bullets and stuff like that and to me it almost seems like this boss is kind of representing an undead uh, an undead werewolf hunter because he has this whole pistols thing going for him anyway we're going to be killing off these monstrosities after which I'm going to be pulling the boss and the way you do this boss is basically you tank him facing away from your group and um, you nuke him down and when he does arcane barrage you step out of the way because arcane barrage makes a, a whole bunch of damage and you want to try and avoid that as much as possible um, the things that this boss does which can be annoying there's one ability called cursed bullets which makes a whole bunch of damage so it should be either kicked or dispelled by whoever can dispel it I know that mages can dispel it I'm not sure if the if the mage dispelled it in this case but I think the, this particular healer could just heal through the damn thing, so whatever. Um, but basically, mages can dispel it. I'm not sure if priests can dispel it as well. I know that paladins can't dispel it because it's a curse or something like that. Uh, but basically, cursed bullets either dispel it or interrupt it. Uh, the other one is the um, bullet barrage. It's not bullet barrage, actually. It's a bullet storm. I don't know. Something he does about the, the bullets. And that you gotta move out of the way. Uh, and then there's the ghouls, and the ghouls what you want to do is you want to kill them off as fast as possible because they will give you a uh, mortal strike debuff, which basically reduces all incoming healing to you. Yeah, it's called pistol barrage, as you can see there, the boss going off. 
shooting up uh, that you don't want to face the boss to your party group during that otherwise they will get killed off now in case you actually wanted to do the achievement for this boss what you gotta do is you gotta ask your group don't use AOE they can't use AOE otherwise the achievement doesn't work and during this particular phase the bloodthirsty ghouls you want to lay down a consecration on the ground and then what you want to do is instead of dodging it you want to dance in front of that on that uh, pistol barrage and the achievement is basically get 12 of his ghouls killed by his own pistol barrage and if you want to do this achievement make sure to warn your healer ha ahead of time and tell him uh, dude I'm gonna be taking massive amounts of damage when those ghouls come up so pay attention to it because pistol barrage hurts like hell but you get this amazing satisfaction when you hear the sound of the ghouls dying they make this like <laughs> sound which I found extremely enjoyable when I was doing this achievement okay guys and I'm about ready to wrap this one up I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you guys will please uh, click either the like or dislike button to let us know if we're doing our job right uh, express your opinion leave a comment believe me we read these comments we take this stuff seriously and we're in it for the long run so I hope you guys enjoy this one on TGN and um, I will see you guys on the next one right here at TGN World of Warcraft